There's a hadith Hazrat Sahal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu May Allah be pleased with him He narrates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That the dhikr of Allah It is immensely greater Than if we equate the amount spent in the path of Allah In another hadith it is stated that to think for a moment is greater than 70 years of worship. 70 years of worship is greater than that. Just to think for a moment, just for a moment, to ponder for a second, to think. Now this thinking, what does that mean? To think, to ponder with your heart, to remember Allah with your heart. This is called dhikr qalbi or maraqaba. So when a person with his heart does the dhikr of Allah, the, the, the method that we explain regularly, this is called maraqaba, silently, the tongue is uh, not moving, and without any audible volume, with the tongue of the heart inside the heart Allah 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 to say this there's no there's no volume nothing can be heard and this is defined as thinking to think and do the dhikr of Allah maraqaba doing dhikr qalbi that's what this dhikr is termed so this dhikr the speciality of it is that Many darajat levels Allah Ta'ala has given, many high grade rewards for the perp for the reason that why this dhikr, with this dhikr, all ibadat that we do with Allah Ta'ala's permission, the faraid we do, the compulsory actions we do, and any other actions we do, this dhikr takes those worship actions to the height or to the level of acceptance. For example, you pray salah, one is salah. That is prayed in parallel with doing dhikr. And one is salah that you pray when you don't do dhikr. So all ibadat, if you take as a similar example, whichever ibadat, salah, fasting, hajj, zakah. If you do ibadat in parallel with doing dhikr in, in your life, then that ibadat, those worship actions, they increase in their status to the status of acceptance. They get so high in level that Allah Ta'ala more readily accepts those worship actions, those deeds. Why? The reason is that when a person does dhikr in his heart, then inside his heart, that special quality, unique qualities are developed, which then transform the physical worship deeds to acceptance. They are devoid of impurities, they become pure. There's no showing off, no takabba, no pride, no uh, doing for the sake of something else. All of the impurities and dirty things are extracted and it becomes pure salah, pure prostration in the presence of Allah. With the dhikr of Allah, with Allah's remembrance, this is how a person's deeds result and he attains that level. And that's why dhikr qalbi, dhikr of the heart is the main dhikr. Now these kalamat we recite prior is called Khatam Khwajgan. Khatam Khwajgan. And we recite these verses, these kalimat, for ithal thawab in order to recite. And so first of all, before we do the we do ithal thawab. In others, we recite these verses and request Allah to 
transfer the thawab, the reward, assign the reward to the awliya Allah due to whom we have learnt and attained the ability to do the dhikr of Allah. So that's why we call it khatam khwajgan, the litany of the khwajgan, those mashaykh, those pious elders, predecessors who are the heads of this Naqshbandi order. So we recite these verses, we request Allah to do ithal thawab to assign the reward of this dhikr to our mashaykh, to our pious elders. And this is the tariqah, when we sit down, whenever you sit down to do dhikr, first of all we recite and ask Allah Ta'ala to assign the reward to their pious souls. Why? Because we know that thawab does arrive, alhamdulillah. Allah Ta'ala does assign the thawab. Definitely, Allah Ta'ala delivers the thawab to their rus, to their souls, due to which their ranks are increased, their status increased. Then from their direction, dua also comes. So when, first and foremost, when we start dhikr, when you do dhikr on your own, in isolation, or when you do dhikr collectively, then this is the tariqah of collective dhikr, is that the shaykh, he, first and foremost, upon the souls of our pious predecessors, he... Ask Allah to send the ithal thawab to their souls. And dhikr khatam khwajgan is done collectively in the company of a shaykh. Because this is not the dhikr uh, that the salik, the student, comes to the shaykh to learn this dhikr. This is not uh, individual dhikr. This is ithal dhikr. Islahi dhikr. Dhikr for rectification is the dhikr that the shaykh prescribes to the individual student. Which is the main dhikr. Which is qalbi dhikr for the student to do. Yes, so what the salik should do, this is just dhikr that you are doing with your shaykh for isal thawab to send the thawab to the pious people. But on your own, you don't do this dhikr. Rather, all your time, the sabak, the lesson that your teacher has given to you, you have to spend time on that. Because all of promotion and progress for the student is based on doing the dhikr he's been prescribed by his teacher, qalbi dhikr. And qalbi dhikr is the specific quality, a special dhikr of the Naqshbandi order. And it's given by the teacher to the student. That's why I stated that when a person does this dhikr of qalb, silent dhikr in the heart, one moment of silent dhikr is better than 70 years of, of worship. So a person, if he sits for minutes and hours, imagine the reward he attains. Imagine the reward he attains. There are many hadith about a, a person, the fadail of qalbi dhikr. Anyway, because khatam uh, khwajgan, the litany for the repetition of the verses for the mashaykh, this is ithal thawab dhikr. Many people think, oh, I should also do this dhikr my own time, I should do tasbihat of this. No, this dhikr is for ithal, for us to collectively recite it and ask Allah Ta'ala to send the reward to the pious souls. But the real dhikr, the genuine dhikr that you need to do, is the dhikr you're given by your teacher on your heart. The shaykh, when he seats the student in front of him, the male, the males, and uh, whatever latifa, whichever lesson he puts his finger on and he pays attention to that part, the body, and then that dhikr is, is made alive in that part of his body. And the women folk behind the parda, the shaykh pays attention, and due to his attention, the dhikr starts. And we say, why doesn't he put the finger? Why well, he's only paid attention? Obviously, Allah Ta'ala has made both male and female different. The woman is soft, and uh, quality is soft compared to a male. Her body is soft and it's not firm. If you take the hand of a man or hand of a woman, it, the, the, the men, their hand is, is solid and hard. And the body of the woman is also soft. And the twajj of the sheikh, it has, a te- it, it has an effect on the woman. doesn't matter how far she is, but the man, he's, he is firm, he is rough. And so he physically is given the dhikr by the teacher. So this is the tariqah of the silsal, of the order. So, this is the main dhikr, dhikr of the heart that the teacher prescribed. Don't think these kalamats, yeah, they're great kalamats, great verses that we recite, khatam khwajgan, Quranic verses, but you are not attaining your objective of purification. You'll attain your objective by the dhikr that your teacher has prescribed to you, the great dhikr, which is dhikr qalbi. So every moment you pass during the day, man or woman, you should be paying attention to dhikr qalbi, dhikr of the heart, the silent dhikr. That's where you should spend more time, more time. The more you do maraqaba, more you do silent dhikr, yes, then the thawab will also be great and vast, as I've said. That one moment in remembering Allah is greater than 70 years of worship, physical. Just by one second, one moment of silent dhikr and the fadail are like this. Because this dhikr, when you do dhikr of the heart, due to this, an individual's spiritual diseases, and spiritual diseases, all of them are attached to the heart. 
take out pride or envy or hatred or um, malice against someone or sadness or wasawis uh, shaitan's attack on you um, within the heart different emotions that stop a person doing good sometimes he has very bad thoughts evil thoughts sometimes you don't feel like doing ibadah you don't feel like practicing all of this the fountain of all of these emotions and conditions is the heart as soon as you implement the cure fortunate are those people who have learned this dhikr straight away close your eyes and focus on the heart and do dhikr kalbi two tariqas either you can do with the tasbih the, the method that you've been prescribed or close your eyes and go into maraqaba focus on the heart automatically slowly 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 so keep on doing keep doing doesn't matter how much whispering comes and your heart sad or you can't feel it doesn't matter sit down with those emotions because when a person he doesn't feel like doing anything he feels hollow and empty there's no enjoyment in ibadah or tasbih or reading quran because the heart is hollow empty so a person should do this straight away close your eyes and take the tasbih or do silent dhikr of the heart and then you will revive your condition and emotions inshallah so subhanallah this is the dhikr of the heart the main dhikr of the student is the dhikr of the heart which is qalbi dhikr silent dhikr marakba this is what we should pay attention to and then with this dhikr all ibadat affected, all the ibadat that we do, they then follow the direction of acceptance. Allah Ta'ala accepts your ibadat then because your ibadah will be wrapped in the dhikr of Allah and the light of dhikr will be included. That's why it's stated that salah that is done with dhikr, then that salah is greater than the salah with, done without dhikr. Whatever action you do with dhikr, it's greater than the actions you do without dhikr. Recitation of Qur'an, if you do with dhikr in parallel, it's greater than the recitation done without dhikr. Yes, so every action is greater because that, the action of dhikr in parallel with the deed, it, if you do the deed with the purity of the heart, then it gives elevation of the deed, so to change the condition of the heart. Whatever, whatever condition your heart is in sadness, if you're down, whispering of shaitan, difficulty, problem, you don't feel like doing things, there's one cure of this, dhikr kalbi, dhikr of the heart. Those people who have not learned this, then immediately learn from a friend of Allah, sheikh, a teacher, this dhikr. Don't lose out. Those who have learned and don't understand its importance, they're the worst. They are big losers. Such a great na'mal has given and they're not taking advantage. Shaitan has tricked them, played games with them, because uh, this is not something that I'm uh, meeting out, distributing. This is what Allah Ta'ala has given to us. And I'm explaining to you, one is dhikr of the tongue, one is dhikr of the heart. And dhikr of the heart is greater. So a person, you can call this qalbi dhikr, maraqaba, thinking in the heart, all these different names of the same one, one action. And I've given you the example of that already. So if you do dhikr for a little while, just a moment, it's greater than 70 years of ibadah. Imagine the status of uh, silent dhikr was in 70 years of worship. They'll be showing off lying and, and deceit. But if you do uh, qalbi dhikr even for a moment, then you're going to do ibadah. It will elevate it, make it better, increase its status, its quality. For this reason, it's stated that dhikr of Allah, it's the silent dhikr, wala dhikr Allah akbar, it is greater than all ibadah. All about that. And it's said for this reason. Some people say, what's this? Um, how can it be greater than Quran and Salah? Salah is this and that and Hajj. And you're saying Dhikrullah is greater. Then Quran is saying this. It's not me saying it. But you don't understand. That's why Allah Ta'ala said it's greater. That's why it's greater. For this reason. Because our ibadat, Dhikrullah makes it your ibadat greater. It increases the intensity of your ibadat. Because it's attached to the heart. So we should focus on thinking. So two things we understand is that Khatam Khwajgan, the verses we recite in the gathering of the sheikhs, uh, sheikhs gathering in the company of the sheikh, that's a trick. Whatever the sheikh does, we say loudly or silently, or he uses um, date seeds as counting method, then that's fine. We can do that. So whatever and however the sheikh does it, we follow that. There's no specific method. That how should you recite? Yeah? So, for example, you could put uh, date stones or, or different stones or pebbles, and as the sheikh recites, you recite. That's also a method. 
Rasulullah said that Shaykh is speaking and you're reciting and there's another tariqah that when, for example, um, you can do it loudly, you get ithal thawab goes also, and other people who are gathered there, somebody, for example, if he recites out loud, the, the, the teacher, then other people, when they will hear this and the, the sakina will go into their heart, and those who don't know dhikr qalbi, then by this method of khatam khwajgan, they are brought to the dhikr qalbi. But those who do dhikr qalbi, for them, the importance of khatam khwajgan isn't as, as important or great as dhikr qalbi. Remember this, don't think that you take a tasbih on your own and start doing khatam khwajgan, la hula wa la quwata Oh, that, for example, if it's told to you to do that as a wazifa, the read la ilaha anta subhanaka and you can all do this, or recite ayat kareema, la hula wa la quwata ila bala etc. Kalama. If the teacher prescribes this as a wazifa, the shaykh can say that for this difficulty, for this time, for that time, do this. Well, do khatam of this. That's a separate point. as an extra uh, prescription of dhikr. But if we say, no, I'll do khatam kwaja myself as well and recite the kalama, there's no benefit for you in that. You will not attain your objective. How will you attain your objective? Through maraqaba. Silent dhikr in your heart. Allah, 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 Allah. To instill the name of Allah into the heart. That's where the benefit will come. So people should not be lazy with this. Spend more time in this, more effort in this. Work hard on this. Hours upon end, hours upon end. The tasbihad you've been told, do your tasbihad. Work hard as much as you can. Yes, um, there are many levels, there are many lataif, and everybody is given the lesson. Whatever lesson you've been given is mizad, to recite the name of Allah on your lessons, then do that in high quantity. Don't pay attention to limit or quantity. That's just a gift from your shaykh that we sit down, we recite these kalaman. But for example, uh, we have a different unique way of reciting with Allah's fadl. We recite like this, that um, people, then their passion and their interest increases. So we gather one together and we recite together. That's a different tariqah. But every shaykh has a different method. You can't say that um, you are doing wrong and he is correct. That's not the case. Uh, according to the conditions, the times, the method that the shaykh adopts, maybe we'll adopt another method uh, at another time according to the people or the understanding. So nowadays we're doing it online. So we're not all reciting together. Uh, so when you recite, recite with passion along with your shaykh, sit down, recite them with a good passion and desire, because these kalamat we are sending as ithali thawab, for example, reciting la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, direct the thawab of this, is going to Hazrat Mujaddad al-Afthani, rahmatullahi alayhi, because he's the head of this silsila, so when you send uh, the ithali thawab of such a great kalima, la hawla wa la quwata, what a great kalima verse in the thawab for this. That this is the door to paradise. La hawla wa la quwwata la billah. This is the door to paradise. This is the treasure of paradise. Ninety-nine illnesses are cured via this kalima, great kalima, and then we are reciting this to present this as ithali thawab for Allah Taala to assign the reward to our mashayikh. So all of the thawab Allah that we're reciting should go to who? As a mujaddad al thani rahmatullahi. Why? Because when we will do dhikr qalbi Allah, then His teachings and the light from His teachings will splash onto our hearts. The fuyus, the blessings from His teachings will come to our So that's why we do dhikr qalbi at the end. All oh, the mashayikh, the, the dhikr we do, we send the ithal al thawab to Him. All of the, the nur and the good effects from them will come into our heart. Yes? So if we think that for Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jalani, that we recite a verse for him, send the reward to him, then Hazrat Khwaja Naqshband, that we recite for him, then Hazrat Khwaja Baki Billah, that we Hazrat Mujid Al-Thani, that Hazrat Khwaja Masoom, we recite for him. All great shaykhs, we recite verses and ask Allah to send the reward for them. And then Hazrat Ali Murtada, Rahmatullah Alayhi. And uh, when we ask Allah to assign the reward to him, then so much great effects, good effects of our pious mashayikh, uh, due to the ithal thawab that we send to them. So when we do dhikr on the heart, all of the nur and the great effects of uh, spiritually will come into the, Allah Ta'ala says, then the, all their fuyus and their blessings come. So in reality, these kalimat that we recite, we recite and ask Allah to send the root to them so that we can get du'as from the pious witnesses so that our dhikr can become good. So that Allah Ta'ala's great, uh, the, the effects of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr can come into our, the more with the love and passion you recite Khatam Khwajgan and ask Allah to send the reward to them because that's what we do for those who have deceased remember
Our mother, father, sister, brother, relatives, when they passed away, they are waiting. They're waiting that my son, what is he sending for me? What's my daughter sending for me? We forget them, don't we? We think our end of story, they've died. The real son is he. The real daughter is she. The real relative is he. Who after the person dies, he doesn't forget that person. He doesn't forget that person. Yes, how can, for example, if he's gone from in front of your eyes, then you think that your relationship with that person's ended? That love has ended? Allah said, no, it's lazim. Essential Mahazrat, Sahib, mashallah, statement of his, I remember that he said, remember, remember that never detach me from ithali thawab actions. Always after salah, send the reward of your salah to me. Ithali thawab, great wealth. A person who's died, he's left this world, he can't do deeds, can he? But when his murid, the student, sends the reward to him, it's lazim, essential for the student to do this. And it's not that. Then the sheikh's fares comes to the student. He, the light and the fares of the sheikh comes to his heart. And subhanallah, that we yearn for Allah's glory and majesty for us to identify the heart. Allah Ta'ala says that when we send ithal thawab to our mashaykh, then the tawajjuh and attention will come from the sheikh and your heart will be full of nur. Then Allah Ta'ala's glory and status and majesty then it descends into our heart that feeling that emotion that appreciation the dhikr we're doing is for this isn't it we close our eyes we do dhikr on the heart we recite Allah's name why do we do that because we want to appreciate and absorb Allah Ta'ala's power and glory and majesty and his status we want to feel that and, and appreciate this is the achievement of Naqshbandi says Allah has given that power the mashaykh to our pious predecessors this is a unique salsalam Allah has given the strength to the mashaykh subhanahu it's a great order and a great effect starts to take place spiritually for the human being for the student so recite from the depth of, I, I'm hopeful that you understand what I'm saying so there are various points the points I've explained to you alhamdulillah various points uh, because morning and evening we do dhikr and mashallah some people the, uh, sit and women folks sit and the brothers sit so to explain to you there are two types of dhikr so that if the dhikr qalbi the silent dhikr of the heart you should have a passion and a desire to learn it and implement it women folk also it's easy for the women folk mashallah that in the, on the phone their heart will become alive behind the veils their, their attention is paid and it has an effect on them because they're soft and tender but for the men folk they need to be in front and the fingers put on to that person's latifa lesson and then his uh, uh, heart becomes alive to the dhikr so two things khatam khwajgan this is ithal dhikr great status we recite the verses ask, ask Allah to assign the reward to our pious predecessors and this assists our dhikr helps our dhikr to get Allah Ta'ala's uh, glory and his majesty so that if we go, uh, Allah said that you are not very appreciative, that you never for- remembered your sheikh and your teachers and you're coming to me to ask, I gave you the deen via my walis and you never sent any reward for them and you, you, you remain selfish. Give them some hadiyah, give them a gift. Subhanallah. So this is called hadiyah. So like in the life, you give gift to a pious person, there's a gift for you, a gift for you. In the same way, this is the method of giving hadiyah. Yes, some people they give hadiyah in weird ways, different ways. Some people send, there's no name on that gift, and there's no address, and they just write. That's a very extreme disrespect against the manners, etiquettes. Whenever you want to give somebody a gift, for example, uh, your auntie, your friend, you want to gift somebody, hey, I'm giving a gift, and if you don't write the name on there, then it would be like ignorance, isn't it? Yeah, it's ignorance, isn't it? Definitely, you need to, for example, if you're presenting a gift to somebody, a friend or to a relative, you're presenting something, then your name should be on there. For example, it's from you. Yeah, at least there should be a name there, so they realize that this person has given this gift. Some people, they do. The, as a formality, the gift is arriving or they're giving something of something, anything, in any form or any way. Person is, for example, I'm giving someone fruit, uh, giving something like water, whatever, whatever you're giving to somebody, then after that, at least that person realizes who has given this, where it's come from, where's it come from. But nowadays, is a fashion. For example, present the gift. There's no name there. Write a letter sometimes, and underneath that, there's no name. Don't know who's written this letter. Who is this person? Which person is it? So how will that thawab come to that person? How will you do dua for that person? Tell me. So it's obvious that if you want to present gift to someone, for example, I give you something, or I want to give a friend a gift, it's fard, that he does dua for you after that, he appreciates the favor, I'm grateful to you, uh, that's the best way. If someone gives you a gift, you do dua for that person, Allah gives blessings to that person, then who gave the gift? Barakallah feek. May Allah give you barakah and blessings. 
It becomes a dua. But when you don't put your name there, you don't know who's come from, and there's no adab, no etiquette, then how will your friend give you dua? Yes, it will become a headache for that person. Then who's this person? Is he a friend, enemy? Is he a trick? What's he want to do? So, for example, just a point that came in between. So this hadiyah, this gift that we send as Ithali Thawab to the pious predecessors, this goes by name that this sheikh is there and his murids are with him. They all collectively to these pious sheikhs in the silsila and we recited all these verses and the thawab for this is arriving to our pious sheikhs and they know that which sheikhs there, which murid and then the tawajjo comes and it turns to that sheikh and his students such tawajjo and attention the anwarat on their, on their hearts they increase and so much light and nurs into the deed that subhanallah for the reason why we sat there to do dhikr that Allah Ta'ala's attention suddenly Allah Ta'ala's attention comes to that group to that, those people who are doing the dhikr of Allah subhanallah so remember that a favor should be returned with a favor. We should never forget the favors of our pious predecessors. Never. So anyway, uh, maybe you will have understood what I've said, what came into my heart. I thought I'd share that with regards to this dhikr that we do so that I can explain in detail. But the real dhikr is the dhikr of the heart. And with dhikr of the heart, true success comes. Through dhikr of the heart comes Allah's nearness. Through dhikr of the heart, you'll attain piety. Through dhikr of the heart, your akhira levels will increase. Through dhikr of the heart... All the virtues of dhikr, all the fadail and the virtues that you hear, all of those are due to dhikr qalbi, dhikr of the heart. No khatam khwajgan. Khatam khwajgan, the fadail are separate, different, but it's not the virtues of dhikr that we know. For us, it's dhikr qalbi, dhikr heart. This dhikr that we do, khatam khwajgan, is for ithal thawab, to send the thawab to our pious elders. It's a, uh, on individually, uh, on your own personally, there's no point of you doing it because you're not with the teacher. And its method is different. One is loud. The sheikh recites. He seats his students. And he recites out loud. And he tells them to follow after him. There's different ways. My tariqah is a little bit, as you know, mashallah, um, is, is good. Everybody uh, likes it. Everybody rejoices with the kalamat. So may Allah ta'ala give us all the understanding of this. And this is the real thing we need to understand. That we need to regularly, firmly and steadfastly do dhikr of the heart. Those who have not learned, the women folk, the men, learn dhikr of the heart. It's a great action. One moment of silent dhikr in the heart. To sit for one moment in dhikr qalbi, dhikr of the heart is greater than 70 years of worship. You see how much tawab you'll attain by even five minutes. If you do dhikr of the heart, you cannot imagine the reward you will attain. You cannot imagine so it's not just reward, alhamdulillah. Thousands of diseases, illnesses, difficulties, worries, jinnat and magic, everything evaporates due to this dhikr. So your intention should be correct and your earnings should be halal. You should be saving yourself from sins. You should be having, you should have love for and implementing the sunnah of Rasulullah. Then this dhikr is nur ala nur. That's the benefit. The more benefit you'll get. Your earnings should be halal. That's the most important thing. After that, you should be save, uh, preventing sins, leaving sins. Kabira, Sagira, number three. Rasulullah's life, according to that, your life should be, your lifestyle, number four. All the faraid, you should protect them. And with these four things, if a person does dhikr qalbi, dhikr of the heart, subhanallah, then he will be flying in the air. That's why I stated about this dhikr. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said that if you do dhikr in this way, even if you sit down on the bed and do this, then you will enter into paradise laughing. That's the meaning of this dhikr. That's the dhikr. In all these qualities should be there, precondition. And about this dhikr, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said in the hadith that the, the, these will be the people who progress the most. The Sahaba Akram said, who are those people who have progressed the most? Rasulullah Sallallahu said, those who do the dhikr of Allah, who do the dhikr of Allah, who remember Allah, uh, they're occupied in the dhikr of Allah, always. Always occupied in the dhikr of Allah. So that's how great this dhikr is. In the hereafter, who will be the people who get the greatest results? Those who do dhikr qalbi, how? Alhamdulillah. The way I've just explained to you. With those conditions, your earnings should be halal. You're earning, your rizq should be halal. You should be protecting the fraid actions. You should be leaving the sins, saving yourself from sin, trying to stave off the sins. They might have occurred, but you stave off the sins. And after that, you do maragba. And also follow the sunnah of Rasulullah, some of these four preconditions. If you adopt these and then you do dhikr of the heart, then in the hereafter your makam will be such that you will be from the progress, the people who've progressed beyond everybody else. And 
and the, the results will be the greatest, those who did the qalbi with these preconditions. That's it. That's it. So inshallah we should work hard and make effort. I will work hard. I'm very uh, lazy. I say a lot and I discuss with you but I'm very lazy myself. So do dua for me, supplicate for me and I'll do dua for you inshallah. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now we'll do dhikr. First what dhikr will we do together? Khatam khwaj gaan. Why are we doing this? So we can send ithali thawab to the mashayikh. Why are we sending thawab to them? So that their focus and their duas can be on our hearts. When their tawajjo, their attention and focus comes towards their duas, as soon as they get the thawab, then they'll do dua for us, then all of the blessings will come to our the moment we do Allah Allah on our hearts, then Allah's glory and majesty and splendor, all of the nur, all the light will come into our heart. Allahu Akbar. Allah <laughs> أنت المقدم وأنت المخفي ولا إله إلا أنت الله ربنا عطينا في الدنيا عسرة وفي الآخرة يسنة وقنا عصاب النار وقنا عصاب القبر وقنا عصاب العشر وقنا عصاب الميزان وادخلنا جنة المعنى والعرج يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم نسلق اللف ولا في المغاطة في الدين والدنيا عني اللهم أحسن عقبتنا في أمور كلها وجنة من نخص الدنيا وصاب اللهم احفظنا من كل ولاة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم احفظنا من كل ولاة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم احفظنا من كل ولاة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم بارك لنا صبينا وبصارنا قلوبنا وزواجنا وزرياتنا طولينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم ربنا الظلمنا نفسنا وإنهم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنا وكنا من نفسي اللهم إنا نسلق من خير ما سارق نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انا نسلك علما نافعا رزقا واسعا شفاء من كل داء شفاء من كل داء والشفاء من كل داء والشفاء من كل داء يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا الله ولكن حكم مغفرة يا الله يا الله تمر شوكي يقولك جنة والله يا الله تمر مازوك يقولك فرما والله يا الله تمر سرورتك جنته يا الله تمر حاجتك جنته يا الله توقف فضل كم سبيل الله مالك أبو بخشت يا الله الله أنتم سياسي ما أنتم يا جماعة دل مي رشبة جاي يا الله سياسي ما أنتم يا جماعة دل مي رشبة جاي يا كريم يا سرسرة يا كين تافر ماذي يا الله يا سرسرة يا سكر يا كين تافر ماذي كي من جي يا كين هذا يك جو مجو مجو كو تطنى دينا همي كنا ومشكل بحش كلي ده كنا يا الله تري سبب مجي بكا يا كين هو جاي कि जो कुछ मुझे पहुंचने हैं वो पहुंच कर नहीं रहेगा और जो तूने मेरे मुकद्दर में लिख दिया मेरे मौला या अल्लाह जो तू कद्दर में कद्दर लिख दिया है मेरे मौला या अल्लाह जो भी कुछ मेरे तूने मुकद्दर में लिख दिया है करीन या अल्लाह या अल्लाह वो तो मुझे आता फरमा दे या अल्लाह जो भी मेरे मुकद्दर में लिखा है वो तो मुझे आता फरमा दे और तू मुझे उस पर जमन दी आता फरमा या अल्लाह मुझे उस पर जमन दे आता फरमा जो भी तूने मेरे मुकद्दर में लिख दिया تیز تقدیر مجھے لکھا ہے میرے مولا اس پر رضا مندی نقصی فرما یا اللہ تو اپنے فضل کم سے اپنے حبیب کو صدقے سے ہماری دعاوں کو قبول فرما وصل اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ خیر خلقہ ہی نمدی ارچہ ہی زینت فرچہ ہی وعادہ ہی یا صحبی یا صحبی یا صحبی یا صحبی یا احنا بیتا یا چوائین بلحمتی کا یا اللہ ومہمین سبحان رب القرآن بلد رزتی و معیصفون و سلام اللہ مرسلی والحمدللہ رب العالمین آمین